Escape plus space plus koi plus with CP and Xiao Xiao is wearing a book. Opening her eyes, she turned into an ancient peasant girl named An Xiao Xiao, still on the road to escape with her family. Oh my goodness. Two children, aren't you trying to kill her? Don't panic, space and silver needles will be collected again. With her koi physique, can she survive in this chaotic world and still talk? Duska mother, abused top-notch relatives, and also picked up a rough man as her husband, madam, you've been staring at my body all the way, isn't it just craving my body? And Xiao Xiao went berserk and said, aren't you a fool? Keywords of the novel. Marrying a rough man. I have become the stepmother of a soft and cute girl without a pop dot up window, marrying a rough man. I have become the stepmother of the soft and cute group. Download the complete set of TXT, Marry a Rough Man. I became the stepmother of the soft and cute group. Latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Wake up and take two children. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Wake up and take two children and Xiao Xiao was awakened by a burst of heat. When she regained consciousness, she realized that her whole body was tingling and extremely sore. Who specifically gave me this strong and seductive drug? When she struggled to open her eyes, she found herself lying by the river, wet all over. Damn it! Where is this? She remembers that she was on her way to the pharmacist conference just now when the driver of the neighboring car drove under the influence of alcohol and collided with a tanker truck. With a loud bang, she was implicated and she's dead. Just as she looked confused, a voice suddenly came from her ear. Mother. Sleeping trough. The voice of a child. And Xiao Xiao followed the sound and found two five-year-old children, all wet, kneeling next to her, looking pitifully at her with red circles around their eyes. Is this calling her? The two little ones looked at An Xiao Xiao like this for a while, their mouths deflated, and they cried uncontrollably. What's wrong, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And Xiao Xiao was so scared that she sat up straight she didn't do anything bad. What are these two kids crying so badly for? Mother, don't leave your treasure behind. Woo Woo, don't leave your second treasure behind, mother. How can you misidentify your mother? Now it's in Xiao Xiao's turn to be confused. At this moment, a strange memory flooded into my mind. After combing through it, she realized that she had been reborn with the body of an unmarried pregnant peasant girl. The original owner was the daughter of the village chief of Anjia village. She is twenty years old and has rare fair and beautiful skin. However, her mother passed away early. She has been sickly since birth and her health is not very good. After his mother's death, his father searched for Su Xian. At the age of fifteen, she made an engagement with her childhood sweetheart, but three days before getting married, she was drugged and thrown into the deep mountains. Feeling uncomfortable, I happened to see a man who was seriously injured, so I couldn't control myself and took advantage of the danger to sleep him. After waking up, she was extremely scared and ran away, feeling disheveled. She returned home only to realize that three days had passed. I never thought my childhood sweetheart would marry her good sister. Her infidelity was also widely rumored, and three months later, she found out she was pregnant, ending up in a dilapidated pigsty. Afterwards, she gave birth to a pair of twins and struggled to raise them until the age of five. In this chaotic and chaotic dynasty, the emperor was incompetent, the people were in dire straits, and many powerful figures supported their own forces. A few days ago, a group of asterisk asterisk sons broke into Anjia village. The general saw her as beautiful as a flower and had a stubborn personality. He said that if he married her to the general, he would not accept the men from their village. And Xiao Xiao was unwilling and begged her father and villagers not to give her to the generals. But in order to protect the male population in the village, she was willing to protect the safety of many people alone, so she forcibly fed her medicine and gave it to the general. On the way to get married, I finally found an opportunity and fled with a pair of children. I never wanted to be chased to the edge of a cliff. 
In order to protect my child, all three of them fell off the cliff and into the water. The original owner wanted the child to come ashore alive and die in the water. Afterwards, she came. Oh my god! This is too tragic. At this moment, the finally suppressed heat reappeared. And Xiao Xiao frowned tightly. The crying tired child quieted down, and due to the fright just now, she gradually fell asleep nestled in her arms. The discomfort on her body made her mouth dry and tongue dry. She had to carefully lay the child flat on the ground, and then she entered the river again to soak. I also know in my heart that even soaking it into phoenix claws cannot cure this medicine. Mad. It would be great if her space also came along, and she wouldn't have suffered this here. And Xiao Xiao cursed in her heart and suddenly felt a sudden pain in her chest, which suppressed the heat. She quickly climbed up the bank from the river and sat by the river to check. Finally, it was discovered that this body was truly weak, accompanied by chronic toxicity. Pup, and Xiao Xiao felt a tightness in her chest and spat out a mouthful of blood. She endured the excruciating pain and wiped the blood from the corner of her mouth. In the next moment, I suddenly felt my palms burning. At a visible speed, a pentagram pattern appeared in her palm. Space. The familiar feeling made in Xiao Xiao's face show ecstasy, as if she really wanted to do whatever she wanted. She quickly checked the storage space she had developed in her past life. Most of the things in the space are related to medicine, whether it's books or medicinal herbs, western medicine or traditional Chinese medicine, as long as they are not difficult to find on the market. Not only that, but even what is needed for wilderness evacuation is stored in the space for future prevention. Thinking of the poison on her body, she quickly found a pill to suppress the toxicity and detoxify her body, and swallowed it. Not only that, but she also drank the health-enhancing potion developed in her previous life. Directly causing the body to undergo transformation and no longer be as weak as before. While the child was still asleep, and Xiao Xiao quickly took out her internal mental skills and began practicing. Perhaps due to the compatibility between the soul and the body, the martial arts that were practiced in several years in a previous life were returned in just a few hours. Fortunately, heaven will not kill me, and the heavens will bless me. Now space is in hand, and martial arts are also available. Even if the war is chaotic, walking horizontally is not a big problem. Mother. The child next to her uttered a warning. And Xiao Xiao looked over and her body's instincts made her eyebrows and eyes soft. These are the children of the original owner, who are five years old and have a seven-point resemblance to the original owner. Due to her semi-free range upbringing, and Shuyue became a shrewd girl. When she was bullied from a young age, she watched how others fought, and then followed suit and developed a set of three-legged martial arts skills. Erbao in use is a clean and quiet boy, perhaps because he is young and always likes to cry. Anyway, the two children have completely different personalities. Thinking of this, she suspected that the person the original owner slept with back then was a wealthy, beautiful, and clean-minded young man from a wealthy family staying here all the time is not the same thing, and Xiao Xiao shook up the two children. The bao air bao, don't sleep, we need to hurry. As soon as they woke up, both little ones sat up and pouted, one crying loudly and the other shedding tears silently. Be good, don't even cry anymore. We need to leave now, otherwise it will be troublesome if someone catches up with us. Our mother will be arrested again when the time comes. Upon hearing this, and Shuyue quickly shook her head, stood up with a pale face, and clenched her fist, saying, I will protect my mother. Mother, let's go quickly. And Yus obediently wiped away her tears and nodded. Seeing this, and Xiao Xiao felt relieved for a moment, picked up and Yus on her back, and then hugged the boss and walked away quickly. She didn't know where this was, so she had to walk along the riverbank. Next, she and the two little ones roasted bird eggs, grilled fish, and grilled chicken when they got hungry on the way. It's strange to say that these wild animals were all thrown away on the roadside, as if they were automatically delivered to the door. 
She found that her luck was particularly good when she woke up, and she could even pick a nest of bird eggs when picking wild fruits. It was getting late, and she and the two little ones had not yet left the forest. Susu Susu Upon hearing this sound, and Xiao Xiao suddenly became alert. At this moment, in the dim night, green light appeared, scattered and particularly penetrating. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Capturing Thieves First Capturing the King You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Capturing Thieves First Capturing the King and Xiao Xiao's cold eyes narrowed slightly, no need to think about what the situation was. She stepped back step by step and ended up hitting a tree. And green light gradually appeared all around. That is to say, I have encountered a pack of wolves now. Mother, is this? And Shuyue, who slid down in Xiao Xiao's back, swallowed her saliva and felt her scalp tingling inexplicably. Shu, keep it down. And Xiao Xiao lowered her voice, you climb up the tree first, and then pick up air bow. And Shuyue nodded, started climbing the tree with both hands and feet, and reached out to pick up her younger brother. With the ups and downs, and use, who was asleep, woke up in shock and looked at the tree with a confused expression, Mom. Follow your older sister, don't make a sound, and Xiao Xiao whispered. At this moment, wolves walked out of the darkness. Seeing this scene, both little ones turned pale with fear. And Yus pouted and pretended to cry. Fortunately, and Xiao Xiao drank a sentence and said, Don't cry, stay in the tree. Mom will pick you up later. Before he could finish speaking, one wolf after another rushed towards him. At this moment, a wolf had already appeared beside her, biting directly at her arm. And Xiao Xiao turned around and avoided, shouting towards the tree, Don't make a sound. You two stay quiet. After shouting, she took a few steps aside and led the wild wolves away. Ow! A howl caught in Xiao Xiao's attention. As the howl fell, the wolf pack launched an attack on her. Wolf King To capture a thief, first capture the king. And Xiao Xiao took out a large machete from the space and chopped off the head of a wolf that was rushing towards him. One wolf was injured, and the other wolves began to pause. But as the wolf king howled again, they launched another attack. And gave a small sneer and quickly fought against the wolf. She moved towards the position of the wolf king while fighting. There were too many wolf packs, and her arm was scratched, but luckily she slashed the wolf king's head with one knife, leaving only fur connected. As the wolf king's life fell, the other wolves let out a whimper and retreated in fear, running away. And Xiao Xiao, who was tightly stretched, made sure that the danger around her was relieved, and then dragged her injured body to the bottom of the tree. Mother and Xu Yue's voice trembled slightly, tears streaming down her face. Wu Wu. My mother has shed a lot of blood, mother is fine, it's all skin injuries. You guys stay on top for a while. Subsequently, and Xiao Xiao found a spot and blocked the sight of the two little wolves with her back. She placed the two wolves that had been chopped down into the space. As long as it is a dead object, it can be placed inside. By the way, he took out medicine from the space to deal with the location of the wolf scratch, and finally gave himself a shot of tetanus. After finishing these, she went over and picked up the two little ones sleeping on the tree. We need to leave quickly, we can't stay here. After speaking, just like before, carrying an Shuiwe on his back and holding in use. After walking non dot stop all night, when the sky was grey, I could see a thatched cottage with rising smoke. The yard outside is sun-dried with coarse linen clothes. She pondered for a moment and saw the two little ones still sleeping. She took out the body of the non-wolf king from the space. Holding in use with one hand and dragging a wolf's tail with one hand, he walked over and shouted, Excuse me. Before she could finish speaking, she saw a young woman walking out of the room. With her eyes facing each other, the woman was surprised to see in Xiao Xiao in a state of embarrassment. She quickly rushed into the room and shouted, Father, come out for a moment. 
In no time, a tall and imposing man appeared behind the woman. Who are you looking for? And Xiao Xiao's eyes rolled and the story came to her mind. Big brother, it's like this. Our mother and three of us met bandits in that village, so we quickly took our children and ran for their lives overnight. Just now I happened to pick up a wolf, and I happened to see you again. I'm thinking of using this wolf to exchange for our mother and the three of us resting at your house for two days, okay? The man looked at the wolf she was pulling in surprise and said, Did you pick it up? Yes, and Xiaomian remained unchanged. The man fell silent. A woman with two children came out of the mountain intact and picked up a wolf. Why is this so unreliable? However, the woman had her own children and could resonate with an Xiao Xiao, the mother who took care of the children, so she advised her husband, Husband, let's leave their mother and three of them to stay in our house for two days. It seems strange. The man always listens to his wife and then nods, Cheng, listen to you. And Xiao Xiao happily dragged the wolf in and said, Big brother, this wolf is for you. Thank you for taking in our mother and the three of us. There is also a wolf king in the space, who is valuable and will be used to exchange money in the future. The woman warmly brought in Xiaoyang and her three companions into the room, and at that moment, the two little ones also woke up. Seeing the stranger, An Yu huddled his head in, in Xiao Xiao's arms, and only An Shuiwei looked around fearlessly. Later, An Xiao Xiao realized that the man was a hunter, which is why he lived with his wife and children in this mountain. Next, An Xiao Xiao and the two little ones stayed in the cowshed for two days to rest and also took care of their injuries. During this period, she learned from the couple that there was a woman and child named Daoxiang Village. Since the war, the village has been taking in homeless women and children. They suggested that she take her children to Daoxiang Village. Having a place to take in is the best option, and there is no need to travel around with the child. Two days later, she left the hunter's house with her two little ones, changed into coarse linen clothes, and followed the route they said to go to Daoxiang Village. However, this time, in order not to let the original owner's face become an obstacle, she changed her face after leaving the hunter's house. Turn the skin tone into a dark shade and add a lot of freckles to the face. Mother, how did you become so ugly? An Shuyue asked curiously. An Yus also nodded and said, Yes, my mother has become unattractive. Upon hearing this, An Xiao Xiao chuckled and said, You two kids are so young that you know whether you look good or not. Mom did this to prevent bad people from taking me away. But I still like the old mother, she's so ugly now. And Shuiwe blinked and carefully touched in Xiao Xiao's face. If we change back to our original face, Mom will be taken away, and you can't be with Mom anymore. You two will be eaten by the big bad wolf, and Xiao Xiao threatened. Upon hearing this, the two little ones were so frightened that they shook their heads and said in unison, that's all for this face. As soon as Xiao Jiu finished speaking, and Xiao Xiao heard the sound of messy footsteps. She quickly hid the two little ones in the grass and said to them, don't make a sound, or you'll be caught. The two little ones were so scared that they nodded like pounding garlic. Just then, a shout came from not far away. Stop, don't run, stop for me. After giving two reminders, and Xiao Xiao hid on the other side. In no time, I saw five asterisk asterisk chasing a young beautiful woman who was still holding a baby in her arms. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Found Money. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 Found Money Animal. Livestock. And Xiao Xiao cursed softly, then remembered the original owner's experience and clenched his fist in anger. As she watched the people getting closer and closer, she said to the two little ones, De bow and air bow, hide them. Mother, go and fight the bad guys. And Shuiwe, please keep an eye on your younger brother and don't run around. The two little ones covered their mouths, opened their eyes wide, and nodded straight. At that moment, the woman suddenly tripped over a stone and the child in her hand fell off. Child. Lying trough. 
And Xiao Xiao flew out and grabbed the swaddle and the child. Fortunately, good luck. The woman quickly got up and was so excited that tears streamed down her face. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, and Xiao Xiao smiled slightly. At this very moment, those five sons chased after them. Run. See how much you stinky girl can run. Hey, is there another girl here? Um. It's a bit ugly, but the figure is still pretty good. The woman's face turned pale with fear upon seeing this, and she grabbed and Xiao Xiao and said, Let's run quickly, run quickly. Being caught will lead to a disastrous outcome. And Xiao Xiao shook her head and protected the woman behind her. Take the child to the back, don't be afraid. She wants to see if it's a pack of wolves or these five stinky ones. The five of them burst into laughter when they saw An Xiao Xiao step forward, laughing at her for overestimating her abilities. However, as one of them reached out to touch An Xiao Xiao's shoulder, a cold light flashed on her hand. A knife directly cut through the man's wrist, and blood instantly flowed out. The other four people were stunned for a moment, then became furious. You stinky girl actually hurt my brother, I'm tired of living. Brothers, go ahead. Take this stinky woman back to the army and serve us well. Unfortunately, in front of an Xiao Xiao, they are not as useless as any other. After just a few face dot to dot face encounters, she knocked them to the ground. She struck fiercely and aimed directly at their acupoints, making them unable to move or even make a sound on the ground. Are you all eligible to join the army? Shit. And Xiao Xiao spat and after a few efforts, he directly disabled the hands and feet of the five of them. The woman looked at the scene with a shocked expression. This is too. Too powerful isn't it? Thinking that there would definitely be other kids nearby, she got up and took out the two little ones. The woman only then noticed that there were also two children hidden here. What is this? This is my child. Let's leave here first and talk about anything on the way. And Xiao Xiao carried two little ones on her back again and walked quickly in the same direction. The woman, feeling isolated and helpless, had no choice but to follow in Xiao Xiao. After a while, they arrived at Daoxiang village, but the village entrance was crowded with people waiting to enter. On the way, she and the woman had already exchanged information with each other. The woman's name is Rong Yang, and the bandits entered the village and killed all of Rong Yang's family, leaving only their orphaned and widowed mother. When fleeing, he found out that he had also stumbled upon Daoxiang village by chance, so he hurried towards this side, only to be seen by asterisk asterisk and chased after him all the way. At this moment, An Xiao Xiao, who was queuing at the back to enter the village, suddenly stepped on something. At first, she thought it was a stone, so she didn't mind and glanced at it. But when she saw a small speck of silver emerging from the soil ahead, she suddenly turned back. That clumsy thing turned out to be a half-exposed silver ingot. I'll take a ride. Where have these people's eyes been? They haven't even seen such a big piece of silver here. Mother, what's wrong? And Xu Yue looked up in confusion when she saw An Xiao Xiao not leaving. And Xiao Xiao carefully crouched down and dug out the silver ingot, squinting and saying, Of course I'm picking up money. Then, under the puzzled gaze of the two little ones, she returned and took a few quick steps to pick up the small silver fragments that had fallen to the ground in front of her. This person is really possessed by koi carp, it's so satisfying, it feels like life has been ruined. And Xiao Xiao delicately picked up the silver and held the hands of the two little ones, calling out to Rong Nyang. She exclaimed with joy, walk, walk, queue up. The two children only saw her happy, and they were also happy. Although my mother has become somewhat strange, it is still their mother. After a moment, a group of them arrived at Daohua village. As rumored, if only women and children are taken in and their names are registered with the village chief, they can be placed in the ancestral hall first, and then moved to the house after the village chief has planned it. After waiting for a long time, the village chief walked over with a sign. 
Shi and Rong Yang are relatively lucky to have been separated into a single small room. Fate lies here, and there is a wall between their rooms. She told the village chief about her plan to smash the wall and live together as two families, and the village chief readily agreed. When the two of them left the temple and walked in the village, they found three men with malicious looks staring at them. To put it bluntly, it's just staring at Rong Yang. Not only that, they also quietly followed, indeed having a lustful and daring heart. And Xiao Xiao saw it, but didn't take it seriously. Only Rong Yang remained close to her, almost walking close to her, afraid of falling behind and being caught by a few jackals behind her. An Yang, why do you think the village chief of Daohua village is so kind to us women and children? I don't know, An Yang, someone is following us from behind. I'm not afraid, I'm here, and Xiao Xiao comforted. In this public place, they won't do anything to us. Even if they really want to do something, they have to wait for no one around. Do you know they're following? Rong Yang was surprised, thinking she knew it herself. And Xiao Xiao let out a sigh and said, These people are so sleazy and blatant. I don't think it's difficult for me to know, but don't be afraid. She has space, so it won't be difficult for them to drink just a little bit. And Xu Yue, standing beside her, raised her small face and said, Mother and Aunt Rong, don't worry. And Xu Yue will fight and protect you. And Xiao Xiao couldn't help but laugh at the sound. This girl is bound to be a little chilly when she grows up. Rong Yang saw this, but there was no smile on her face. She opened her mouth, but couldn't say anything. Don't be afraid. How can we not be afraid? Those men just want to take action against them. Just be careful, be careful. According to the village chief, when An Xiao Xiao and Rong Yang arrived at their residence, the wall separating them was quite thick and needed someone to break it down. Thinking of this, An Xiao Xiao had a sudden idea. Looking for someone. Coincidentally, aren't these few remaining free laborers? Rong Yang knew that the middle wall would break through, so she kept following An Xiao Xiao and didn't dare to look at the few people following behind her. An Xiao Xiao entered the room and looked for a while, instructing the two little ones to lie down and rest inside, not to peek, especially in Xu Yue, otherwise they would be angry. She was just worried that the two children would be scared by her own cruelty and leave a childhood shadow. Although An Xu Yue was lively, she couldn't resist being young. She and the original owner have different personalities, and she needs to slowly make the two little ones accept her as they are now. The two little ones were obedient and obediently closed their eyes and lay in bed. Subsequently, An Xiao Xiao took out a stool from the room and pressed Rong Yang to sit on it. Just sit here and watch the play, she said, end of this chapter. Chapter 4 Call Me Auntie You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Call Me Auntie The three men looked around and saw no one around, so they followed in. The person at the back even closed the door. Come on, let's talk about how to divide them. The man in charge chuckled. An Yang. Rong Yang's face turned pale with fear, and she thought of going into the house to hide, only to find that her legs couldn't work hard. Don't panic, An Xiaofeng said lightly. After discussing, the three of them decided to come together. However, before they could come over, and Xiao Xiao took the initiative to walk over. The three of them stood in confusion and said, This woman is brave enough. She not only didn't run but also took the initiative to come over. Do you want to keep an eye on things? Upon hearing and Xiao Xiao's words, the three of them were taken aback. Then they saw her reach into her own collar. Her action made them all involuntarily drool. Upon seeing this, Rong Yang was so frightened that she suddenly shouted out. Feeling weak all over, she could only helplessly and helplessly watch as the three of them reached out to An Xiao Xiao. Suddenly, the sky was covered in white gray. The three of them were caught off guard by An Xiao Xiao's sudden attack and sucked all the powder in the air into their noses. Cough. It's choking me to death. What did you spill, bitch? 
and Xiao Xiao quickly turned around and distanced herself from them, saying with a smile, of course it's a good thing, cheap men. Now, I'll give you two paths one is to surrender now and become my subordinate, I'll protect you from death, and the other is for you to report to the Prince of Yen later. After scattering the dust in the air, the three men looked at each other and then stared at an Xiao Xiao, laughing heartily. I laughed so hard, this girl still says let us die. Where did she get that confidence? Fool, you can say such things. It's not. Um. The last person to speak suddenly turned pale, and their entire face turned black, especially their lips, as if they had eaten a piece of charcoal. The other few people were stunned when they saw the situation. What, what's going on? I didn't know, I, ouch. Then another man collapsed on the ground with his stomach in his arms, rolling and his nose began to bleed, seeming in unbearable pain. The man led by him saw this and his face changed again and again. What have you, this stinky girl, done? I said, if you become my subordinates and follow my orders, I can guarantee that you won't die. Otherwise, you'll have to go play chess with Prince Yen in broad daylight. And small smile is charming, but her words make people shudder. The leading man saw that he had nothing to do and thought of holding in Xiao Xiao, but before he could swing his fist, he collapsed weakly to the ground. And Xiao Xiao squatted down to look at the three of them, gradually retracting her smile and the words popping out between her lips and teeth were extremely cold. You only have half a burning incense to think about now. After this time, I will pack all of you and feed you to the wolves in the mountains, leaving you with no bones left. Oh, by the way, remember to add the words auntie when you call me later. Upon hearing this, the three of them were visibly frightened, as they had never seen such a fierce woman before. The next half burning incense will make you feel even more uncomfortable than now, enjoy the feeling of life is better than death. Dot. After finishing speaking, she stood up and clapped her hands before coming to Rong Yang. She bent down and helped her up, let's go inside. Rong Yang's body was stiff, and she felt the parts touched by An Xiao Xiao were particularly piercing, making her feel a bit uncomfortable. An Xiao Xiao also noticed that Rong Yang's body was trembling, and immediately let go of her hand, with a calm expression. Rong Yang, this is my purpose as a person. Don't provoke me and we will be safe. But if you provoke me, I will make your life worse than death. Only in this way can you survive and not be bullied. If you feel unwell and don't want to live with me anymore, then you can go. The wall hasn't been demolished yet. In Luo, she no longer glanced at Rong Yang and suddenly entered the room. At this moment, the two little ones were probably too tired and fell asleep as soon as they touched the bed. She didn't wake up the two little ones, but quietly surveyed the room. This is a very ordinary thatched cottage, cold in winter and cool in summer, but for refugees, it is much better than sleeping outdoors. Rong Yang stood at the door, watching and Xiao Xiao, her whole body unable to stop feeling cold after a while, she hesitated apologetically and said, Annie, I'm sorry. You were also trying to protect me. I was really scared just now, but now I'm thinking about it. Let's continue living together. Upon hearing this, and Xiao Xiao slowly curled up the corner of her mouth and, disregarding any past grievances, said, okay. In fact, she had originally planned to live with the two little ones, but seeing Rong Yang as an orphan and widowed mother was very pitiful. She was both good dot looking and easily coveted by bad men, which aroused her sympathy. Anti, ah. A heart-wrenching cry came from outside. After hearing this, and Xiao Xiao didn't immediately walk out, but instead lingered in the room for a while. When the three of them couldn't help but shout, Auntie, in their undulating voices outside, she slowly walked out. Looking at the three people wearing pain masks on the ground, and Xiao Xiao smiled brightly and said, What's wrong, grandsons? What's wrong with calling them aunties? The three of them were so angry that their teeth itched, but they had no choice but to control their lives in her hands. Auntie, we were wrong. Please spare us. 
we have specified that we will not harass you again. Yes, aunt, we are blind. Please let us go. Me too, I swear if I disturb you again, I'll be struck by lightning and die hard. After listening, and Xiao Xiao shook her head regretfully and said, I told you, you only have two paths to go. Now that the half-burning incense is almost over, it seems that you must choose the second path. The three of them were confused. What is the second path? Seeing the haze in her eyes, the three of them trembled and suddenly thought that the second path was to die without a burial ground. One of the men was afraid and said, Auntie. Auntie, I'll handle it. I'll handle it as your subordinate. Please help me quickly, it really hurts so much that I can't hold my shit. He doesn't even have a seed, he can't die. And Xiao Xiao gave a disdainful look and said, What's your name? Is there anyone at home? Let's talk about them one by one. If you dare to lie, then. I dare not dare. My name is Han San, and my family is already empty. My parents passed away, and my wife ran away with someone. I am the only one left in the family. I am twenty-five years old this year. Upon hearing this, and Xiao Xiao nodded and took out a pill from his arms, stuffing it into his mouth. From now on, you'll be called Han San, he said Han San wanted to cry without tears and said, Auntie, my name is Han San, not Han San. It's all the same. Forget it, don't argue with this woman. Once the poison is detoxified, he will stay away from her. However, and Xiao Xiao penetrated his thoughts with a cold expression on his face. Don't think that if you take the medicine this time, you will be fine. I told you to be my subordinates, and I will protect you from death. But if you don't listen to me, you will still be poisoned every month. If there is no antidote, go ahead and report it. Upon hearing this, Han Sanyi's face turned pale and he said, Isn't this asking me to sign a contract of sale? I will listen to you for my whole life. That's not necessary. One day when I leave Daohua village, you will be free. Han San had already recovered, and he got up and sat on the side with a mournful face. When will you leave? End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Collects Three Simple and Silly Characters You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Collects Three Simple and Silly Characters and Xiao Xiao glanced at it but didn't answer. There are still two people left, one of whom has fainted from the pain. She continued with her sleeve and took out a silver needle to stab the person a few times, making them sober up. With the silver needle around, he couldn't faint even if he wanted to. Under her torment, the two compromised, with the oldest named Lien Chinner and the other named Wu Si. These three people are all from the original Daoxiang village, just flowing and not likable. To make it easier to remember, she changed their names to Er Han, Han San, and Xiao Han. They couldn't understand why they used silly until she left Daohua village in the future. When they asked, they found out that she thought the three of them were all silly. After taking in the three of them, and Xiao Xiao asked them to go and tell the village chief that they wanted to move the house to her side, so that they could arrive as soon as possible. There was no one living next to her house, so someone could manage these three people. The village chief happily agreed. Later, she began to command Er Han and the three of them to smash the wall and connect the two families. This commotion directly woke up the two little ones. The two little ones thought something had happened and ran out of bed in a daze. Mother. The supervisor, and Xiao Xiao, saw the situation and his cold face slowly calmed down. Hey, I'm here, he said the three silly people who were desperately smashing the wall were almost blinded when they saw this. Is this gentlewoman the one who tortured, bullied, and threatened them just now? Two little ones ran over and grabbed her hand, both curiously looking at the three silly ones. And Shuyue asked, Mother, who are they? Well, that's Er Han, this is Han San, and the one at the far end is Xiao Han. And Xiao Xiao reached out and pointed at them. Two little ones are confused. What a strange name. 
Three silly people. Dot. The two children were taught to be polite by their original owners from a young age. So they fell silent for a moment and shouted in unison, Uncle Er Han, Uncle Han San, Uncle Shao Han. For some unknown reason, the three silly people heard the two tender milk sounds, and their unhappiness instantly dissipated. And Shao Shao didn't stop the two little ones from shouting like this. After three silly people smashed the wall, she instructed them to clean up her and Rong Yang's house, both inside and outside. Afterwards, they went to fetch water and cut firewood, and went to the ancestral hall to provide food relief, and so on. Anyway, as long as she can command them to do it, she will never take action. It was only at this moment that the three silly people realized that they had met a woman who was even more terrifying than a tiger. It was night, and an Xiao Xiao tossed and turned in bed, unable to sleep. The two little ones were sleeping soundly beside her. An Shuyue flipped over and half of the jade pendant hanging around her neck slid out. This yes, this jade pendant belongs to the man who slept with the original owner five years ago. The original owner was walking in a hurry and accidentally grabbed the jade pendant. When I regained my senses but was afraid to go back and find it, I kept it. It wasn't until the two little ones were born that the original owner cut the jade pendant in half and gave each of them half to wear. He even said it was left by their father before his death. Afterwards, every time the two little ones would quietly hold the jade pendant and think of the father they had never seen before. The original owner saw it in his eyes and felt pain in his heart. Thinking of this, An Xiao Xiao sighed deeply. I don't know if that man knew about the existence of the two little ones back then after settling down, and Xiao Xiao remained low. Key and didn't go out when he had nothing to do. When he went out, he would bring three silly animals into the mountain to collect herbs, leaving two little ones at home with Rong Nyang. Rong Nyang has a skilled hand in weaving. She asked the villagers for a weaving machine to weave cloth at home and exchange it for money. A few days later, the wind and sun were sunny. And Xiao Xiao, dressed in plain white, went to the mountains and came back to sleep soundly on a tree not far from home. This is her special hobby. If it weren't for the hem of the coat falling off, no one would have noticed someone sleeping on a tree. At this moment, after being manipulated by various means for a few days, three silly people who had lost their temper appeared under the tree. They looked at the woman on the tree, exchanged glances, and shouted loudly, Auntie. Let's go home for dinner. The three of them spoke in unison, startling all the birds on the tree. However, and Xiao Xiao remained unmoved. The corners of their mouths trembled as they were about to continue shouting, but their mouths were blocked by jujubes flying from the tree. You three are making a lot of noise. And Xiao Xiao opened a pair of beautiful eyes, sat up with a cold face, and every move and gesture showed a refined demeanor. Then, she flipped over and quietly fell to the ground, holding a basket of big dates in her hand. Upon seeing this, Erhan quickly reached out and smiled, saying, Auntie, can I help you with it? Hmm. And Xiao Xiao gave Erhan a satisfied look and handed him the basket. These days, under her training, the three silly ones are as obedient as little sheep. On the way back, and Xiao Xiao lazily asked, Are both little ones at home? Er Han said, There you are. Upon hearing this, she reached out and took the basket from her hen's hand. With a movement, she was already five steps away from them. Er Han and the three of them looked surprised. After a few days of hard work, Ant's likeness skills have improved day by day. Auntie, wait for us. The three of them chased after each other vigorously from behind. These days, she has also taught them some self.defense skills, with the aim of protecting the two little ones when she is not at home. On this side, and Xiao Xiao ignored them and hurried past, stopping at the doorstep. In just an instant, the cold expression on her face softened. Upon hearing the sound of the door opening, the two little ones playing in the yard looked over and their eyes lit up. Mom! Well behaved, I brought you big dates. And Xiao Xiao lowered her head and looked at the leg pendant on her leg, her lips curling up. 
Wow, thank you, mother, the two little ones spoke in unison. And Xiao Xiao smiled and reached out to wipe the dust off An Shuyue's face. An Shuyue, you're a girl. How did you make your face dirty? Look at your younger brother, he's a cleaner boy than you. Staring at their faces, An Xiao Xiao could see through them the face of the man who had been asleep deep in her memory. In my memory, that man was very fierce and handsome. Thinking of this, An Xiao Xiao couldn't help but lick her tongue. The two little ones only saw her expression and exchanged a glance with a smile, saying, Oh, is it because my mother is thinking of men? Dot. And Xiao Xiao glanced at the two little ones and said, Yes, your mother and I are empty, lonely, and cold. I miss men every day. She is also drunk. These two little ones are particularly precocious, many of which have not been taught before. As long as they hear from others, they can figure it out thoroughly. Where's Aunt Rome? I don't know, it's been a while since we last went out. And Shuyue ate the dates while spitting out the dates, extremely indecent. At this moment, Er Han and the three of them came back panting heavily. And Xiao Xiao looked at her disdainfully and said, I'm running slowly again. I'll practice running again next time. By the way, hurry up and find Rong Yang to come back for dinner. Burhan propped up the fence, shaking his head and gasping for breath, saying, No, auntie. Rong Yang, whoa. Has been taken away. Many women and children in the village have been taken away. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Brave Adventures into Bandit's Nest You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Brave Adventures into Bandit's Nest Upon hearing this, and Xiao Xiao narrowed her cold eyes and suddenly stood up, speak clearly. Er Han swallowed his saliva and said, I also heard that there was a group of bandits around yesterday. The village chief went to talk to the bandit leader and said that if we hand in enough food, we won't disturb our village. But after handing it over, they went back and abducted many women and children at the village entrance. They even said that if they wanted to exchange them back, they would have to exchange silver this time, calculated by head, for fifty tails per person. Upon hearing these words, and Xiao Xiao's face darkened and she opened her mouth. What a bully! When my sister Dot and Dot Law goes, I must beat them to pieces. And Xu Yue spoke first of her. Dot. And Xiao Xiao blushed, worthy of being her own daughter, just fierce enough. But it's better for her to come to the bandit's den. Follow Uncle Xiao Han and wait at home, I'll come over as soon as I go. Well, Mom, I'm going with you too. I want to learn a few moves. After speaking, and Xu Yue suddenly pulled out the dagger hidden in her waist for self.defense. Mom, look, you gave me this, it can teach bad people a lesson. And Xiao Xiao couldn't help but support her forehead and put away the dagger in An Shu Yue's hand. I'll take care of it for you, my mother. If you listen to me in the future, I'll play with it for you. This is a dagger made from a piece of black iron that she accidentally obtained in her past life, cutting iron like mud. It was originally what she wanted, but An Shu Yue kept asking for it, so she gave it. Oh my mother, why don't you give it back to me? I won't go, I promise not to. And you and I will stay at home. Seeing this, and Xiao Xiao was half convinced and half doubted, really. And Xu Yue nodded like pounding garlic and said, really. Believe it this time. After speaking, and Xiao Xiao handed the dagger to An Shu Yue and then instructed Xiao Han to take care of the two little ones at home. Afterwards, he left home with Er Han and Han San and walked towards the village entrance. As soon as everyone saw her, they all gave way. Before she could speak, everyone begged her to help save their wife and children. As soon as the village chief saw her, he knelt down in front of her. And Nyang, we know you have martial arts skills. Although this time is very risky, we still ask for your help. The big men here are willing to go with you. And Xiao Xiao reached out and helped the village chief up, saying, I'll take them with me. 
while you're in the village, you should also guard against those bandits entering the village. Is it possible to rely solely on you? The village chief asked with a gloomy expression on his face. Before she could speak, Air Han said first, Don't worry, village chief. My aunt took action, not only to save people, but even the bandits' den can be used as a resting place. This, this. The village chief was shocked. And Xiao Xiao raised her hand and slapped the back of Er Han's head, saying, Stop boasting here, hurry up. Upon seeing this, Han San covered his mouth and laughed wildly, You deserve it. You didn't flatter well, did you? You call me a horse. And Xiao Xiao raised her hand. These three foolish people have been fooling around with themselves for a long time, and their speech has become more and more unrestrained. I dare not. That's wrong. And Xiao Xiao glanced at it and skillfully used his lightness skills to leave the village, heading towards the bandit's lair. After a moment, she appeared first in the bandit's den. Looking at this scale of bandit den, her eyes were only disgusted. She thought this mess was going to be big, but ended up being such a mess. Can't even compare to Daohua village. Auntie, you're waiting for us. Erhan appeared sweating profusely. Han San is also tired and panting. It's really useless, and Xiao Xiao sneered. It's up to you too. She took out two bamboo tubes from her sleeves. Wait for good news from us. Erhan raised his eyebrows and took the bamboo tube, chuckling, and Xiao Xiao. Han Pai. She walked in without changing her expression and used her lightness skills to climb the tree. In the blink of an eye, she appeared in the bandit's den, unknown to anyone. At this moment, the bandits who had abducted many women and children were cheering and celebrating. Some even suggested catching a few women to come out and have a good time. The bandit leader selected a few beautiful women and pulled them out, forcing them to dance stripteases. And Xiao Xiao saw the situation and cursed in a deep voice. Animal. At this moment, thick smoke rose up not far away. I didn't teach these two foolishness for nothing, they just handle things quickly. I just gave them phosphorus powder, which will burn under the sunlight. Boss, it's on fire. I saw it. The bandit leader kicked his little brother and shouted, Everyone is looking at me. Wait for me to go put out the fire. A group of people went around looking for something to put out the fire with water. And Xiao Xiao saw this and took out a small bamboo, blowing it at the bandit leader. The silver needle shot out and pierced directly into the head of the bandit's neck, making him unable to move in an instant. At this very moment, Erhan and Han San also came here. Auntie! Air Han shouted. You go save everyone, I'll wait here. Damn it! Auntie, be careful! Air Han led Han San towards them and forced him to ask for his position from one person's mouth. In no time, we found this group of women and children and prepared to evacuate them. After seeing An Xiao Xiao on the roof, Rong Yang wanted to shout, but the latter made a silent gesture at her. Upon seeing this, Rong Yang immediately understood and took a worried look before leaving. The bandits have all gone to put out the fire, and no one knows what happened here. And Xiao Xiao yawned and took out a handkerchief to cover her face. She lightly jumped and came to the unconscious bandit leader's side. She just didn't want these people to recognize her while wearing a face scarf and cause trouble for Daoxiang village. Listening to the sparse footsteps, she knew that the bandits who were fighting the fire had all rushed back. Boss, the fire has gone out, but... When they saw An Xiao Xiao holding a soft sword casually around their necks, everyone stopped. Woman. Who are you? What are you going to do to our boss? If you don't want to die, just let go. And Xiao Xiao remained silent and watched as all the bandits rushed over, surrounding her. Are you all here? Everyone couldn't understand the meaning of her words. Do you want me to let you go? And Xiao Xiao looked at the person who had just started speaking. Yes. If you dare to touch our leader, you won't be able to leave here. 
And Xiao Xiao sneered at the words and said, Well, if you can tell me all the bad things your boss has done, I'll consider it. Otherwise. She lifted the soft sword upwards, and the bandit leader's neck instantly showed blood. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 Rescuing Hostages You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 8 Collecting a Fool You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9 Preparation of the Medical Center You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Preparation of the Medical Center Ante. You can go back to the house for dinner now. After this period of adjustment, Dao's face was noticeably rosy, and even his voice became louder. At this moment, he was holding a juju basket and searching for people in the backyard. Stop shouting. There was an impatient voice from the tree, and the leaves rustled down in the wind. De Wu squinted his eyes before he could see in Xiao Xiao's white clothes falling in front of him. Can you find something to do on your own? And Xiao Xiao was disturbed by Qing Meng, her face showing displeasure. She nodded at De Wu's head, her tone a bit crazy, don't follow me in the sky. Today, Xiao Han went out to play with his two little ones, and it was rare to have some leisure time. As a result, he added such a procrastinator. And Xiao Xiao is helpless. Auntie's business is my business, said Dao, who didn't get angry even after being scolded. He followed behind her foolishly. And Xiao Xiao rolled her eyes and quickly jumped back into the room, leaving only Dao Wu behind desperately shouting. Mother. We're back. And Xiao Xiao just entered the room when she ran into Xiao Han and brought back two little ones. An Yus obediently held Xiao Han's hand and followed her obediently, while An Shuyue's hands and neck were all piled with small snacks, riding on Xiao Han's neck and waving excitedly at her. Mother, eat tomatoes on sticks. An Shuyue came down from Xiao Han and dangled her short legs on An Xiao Xiao, trying to send tomatoes on sticks to her mouth. An Yu stood quietly on the side and obediently called out, Mother hello. It's so sweet. And Xiao was so careful that she was about to be cute. She picked up two of them, kissed each other, and looked back at Xiao Han, who was constantly sweating. She tossed them around, did you spend Xiao Han's money again? It was the money I gave him. And Xu Yue nestled in in Xiao Xiao's arms, her mouth glistening with sugar stains, and pouted to act coquettishly. My aunt didn't spend money recklessly. In order to cultivate the awareness of financial management for the two children as soon as possible, and Xiao Xiao will regularly give them pocket money every week, allowing them to manage it on their own. But now it seems that An Shuyue may have already spent all the money. And Xiao Xiao's inner support. These two little ones really don't seem to have come from the same mother. A few people were fighting and making noise at the door. De Wu caught up panting and saw An Xiao Xiao holding the two little ones to coax, with a silly smile on his face. It's time to eat, auntie. Uncle De Wu. An Shu Yue saw De Wu and reached out his hand to make him hold her. De Wu took her and lowered his head to prick An Shu Yue with his facial beard, making her giggle and laugh. Humph, once you have a father, you forget about your mother. And Xiao Xiao looked at this scene sourly and turned her head directly into the house to eat. Out of sight is out of mind. The group finished dinner in a lively manner, leaving San Han and De Wu to tidy up outside. And Xiao Xiao entered the room to coax the two little ones to sleep, while continuing to think about the plan that was interrupted by De Wu in the morning. The situation in Daoxiang village has been basically understood, and after the bandit den incident, she has also firmly established herself in the village. Now, it is urgent to make some long-term plans. Money is not lacking, but after all, with a large family here, we still need to find some serious ways to make a living. And Xiao Xiao lightly patted her two little backs, humming a melodious tune in her mouth. Her thoughts surged, and the corners of her mouth gradually curled up, forming a plan. Are you going to open a medical clinic? 
Rong Yang looked at An Xiao Xiao in surprise. That's right. An Xiao Pu opened the shop map she took from the village chief and showed it to Rong Yang. This is an empty shop given by the village chief. I stepped on it in the morning, and the location and size of the shop are very suitable. Have you already gone to find the village chief? Rong Yang was even more surprised and shocked by An Xiao Xiao's efficiency in doing things. I went early in the morning. I just wanted to discuss with the village chief, but he happened to have an empty shop. And Xiao Xiao was immersed in his own planning and couldn't help but reply to Rong Yang, there isn't even a decent hospital in the village. If I could open it, it would be convenient for everyone to see a doctor in the future. There aren't enough manpower now, so I might need you to help me during this period. Will it be too hasty? This is not enough, Rong Yang hesitated. And Xiao Xiao couldn't bear to see her like this, so he grabbed her wrist and ran out. You and I will go to Carpenter Chow's place to make a few cabinets first, and then accompany me to pick some utensils. Let's prepare everything for the next two days. Hey, slow down. And Xiao Xiao is swift and decisive in her work, coupled with Rong Yang's meticulous personality, all the necessary items have been purchased in less than a day, and the cost is still more than half of what she expected. Rong Yang, you're amazing. And Xiao Xiao exclaimed while holding an abacus in the shop, which made Rong Yang feel a bit embarrassed. After a moment of contemplation, her tone became a bit worried again. We have prepared everything we need, but we don't have enough manpower and medicinal herbs. We won't be in a hurry for a while. The most important thing in a medical clinic is medicinal herbs. Daoxiang village is now a barefoot doctor, and usually I have to go to the town more than 10 miles away to get medicine. When I open a clinic in the future, how can I ensure the supply of these medicinal herbs? Rong Yang's concern is reasonable, but who is in Xiao Xiao? Can this little thing stump her? Do you know the Lu brothers who live in the west of the village? I know, the errand runner specializes in going to other villages to buy. Rong Yang paused in her tone and suddenly realized, do you want them to go to other villages to buy? But they only go out to buy for a while every five days, and the quantity is not large enough, which is not enough for the hospital's daily medicinal use. All right, one step at a time. Can living people still be troubled by dead objects? And Xiao Xiao's eyes showed cunning, as if unwilling to say more, pushing Rong Yang back. Let's go home for dinner first, we'll talk tomorrow. The two of them ran outside for a day, and all three children were taken care of by De Wu alone. At first, Rong Yang was not at ease, but when she returned home, she saw a big and three small children chatting and playing around the house, which relieved her heart. De Wu looks rough and straightforward, but he is meticulous in his work. The dishes were all taken care of by De Wu, with all the colors, flavors, and flavors, perfectly avoiding things and Xiao Xiao didn't like to eat. Rong Yang couldn't help but joke. Auntie, is it delicious? The tall and strong man huddled at the low wooden table, holding a small bowl and eagerly looking at an Xiao Xiao's food intake, his face showing a hint of nervousness. Well, it's okay. And Xiao Xiao became nervous when she saw him doing this inexplicably. She didn't know how to react and could only avoid her gaze and lower her head to eat. What's going on? she actually thinks this person is a bit cute. Without receiving the expected response, De Wu visibly fell down. And Xu Yue, who was sitting next to them, glanced at them and exclaimed loudly, Mother, she likes to eat. She's too embarrassed to say that. Just like she actually quite likes you, but she's too embarrassed to say it. And Xu Yue. And Xiao Xiao couldn't bear it anymore and waved her chopsticks with a snap as if to catch her. Who taught you these things? Help. Eat the child. Uncle Wu, help me. A few people got into a commotion, and in use, the little ghost next to him, sighed and felt like he was sitting further away with a bowl. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Teaching and Recognizing Herbs. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Teaching and Recognizing Herbs, This is Cinnabar, 
which can treat palpitations, shock, insomnia, and many dreams. It is ochre, which cools blood and stops bleeding, and has the effect of calming the liver and concealing yang. This is. Are you listening? A loud shout exploded in her ear, and An Shuyue was so shocked that she let out a whoop. She hurriedly wiped the saliva from her mouth and helped the medical book that had hit her. The person in front of her showed a pleasing smile and said, Mother, remember. What is this? An Xiao Xiao glanced at An Shuyue a few times and casually opened a page in the medical book, clicking on it. This is sweet, sweet, and Shuyue scratched her cheek and forced her scalp to hold back a few words. Seeing An Xiao Xiao's gaze becoming increasingly fierce, she desperately elbowed An Yus, who was sitting beside her, and silently pleaded for help. Licorice. An Yus held the book and sighed softly. You don't give a word. The vine slammed against the edge of the table, causing both small shoulders to shrink in shock. So what is this? Huang Qi. Ma Huang. Without support, An Shuyue scratched her ears and cheeks even more. She turned her gaze to An Yus, who met her and naturally shifted her gaze away. Okay, An Yus, you ungrateful person. An Shuyue, what kind of face are you making at your brother? An Xiao Xiao was so angry with An Shuyue's generous attitude that her temples jumped. The vines brushed against the table and made a crisp sound. Today, I won't say it, I won't eat. Angelica sinensis, warm in nature, nourishes and promotes blood circulation. A small sound of breath came from the side of her body. And Xiao Xiao frowned and the small stone with her thumb hit her in response, I said no help. Ouch. The man's painful moans came from the grass, and then a furry big head crawled out with a silly smile on his face. Hello, auntie. What's the trouble you're causing here? And Xiao Xiao felt a headache and waved as she was about to drive people away. Let's go cook. I didn't cause any trouble, this is Angelica Sinensis. Da Wu objected. If you're asked to cook, why don't you go? Is it really Angelica Sinensis? And Xiao Xiao lowered her head to look at the picture album, somewhat surprised. She looked at Da Wu and asked a few more questions without believing in evil. And this. Saffron, promoting blood circulation and removing blood stasis. Dao obediently stood at attention and looked at the picture book, answering fluently. Do you know any herbs? And Xiao Xiao exclaimed, holding on to Da Wu and looking left and right in surprise. Someone taught you before. Isn't it taught by my aunt? Dao still had a silly expression and a shy smile. I heard my aunt say it when I was picking dates before, so I remember it by the way. I didn't expect this silly big brain to be quite useful. During this period, the business of the medical clinic has gradually entered the right track, and An Xiao Xiao has also started teaching the two little ones how to identify drugs. Unexpectedly, the little one did not teach them, and there were other unexpected gains. Anne's little eyes twirled twice, and she had a new idea. You're like this. Tomorrow morning after dinner, go to the clinic to find me. I'll wait for you there. And Xiao Xiao smiled and squinted his eyes, patted his shoulder, picked up two small ones and walked back. Go home, eat. The two little ones caught in a creaky pit on one side looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders. A woman's heart is like a needle in the sea. I'm finally done. And Xiao Xiao breathed a sigh of relief as he saw off the last person to see a doctor in the morning. She rubbed her sore shoulder and let out a long sigh. The location of the medical clinic is not far from the village entrance, and there is a constant stream of people coming and going. Previously, there were only wandering doctors in the village, which made it inconvenient for villagers to seek medical treatment. Now, the medical clinic has officially opened, with cheap medical fees. In addition, An Xiao Xiao has a warm personality, and whenever the villagers have a headache, they are willing to go to her place. An Xiao Xiao has to be busy for half a day every time before she can rest. Mrs. An, Da Wu has been here for a long time. 
The elementary school disciple at the clinic saw that An Xiao Xiao had finally finished his work and quickly ran to her side whispering, he has been squatting in the backyard, but he can't persuade him to leave. Bad thing. I forgot about him. And Xiao Xiao suddenly woke up and patted her forehead, running quickly to the backyard. Go to the inn and heat up two dishes and bring them over. Opening the curtain and entering the backyard, the Wu squatted next to the medicine garden, his tall body curled up, his eyes fixed on the muddy ground, and he didn't know what to say. And Xiao Xiao hesitated for a moment, then relaxed his hands and feet and squatted next to him. What are you looking at? Auntie. You're done. Do saw and Xiao Xiao come, surprised and happy. He pointed to the herbs planted in the medicine garden and said foolishly, I recognize the medicine. There isn't even a seedling, what can you recognize? It's early spring now, and although the weather is still warm, it's still refreshing. And Xiao Xiao leaned against a Wu and touched his steam-soaked sleeve, feeling inexplicably frustrated. She swung her sleeve and grabbed his arm, standing up with a displeased expression, saying, Are you really stupid to say you're stupid? Such a big person wouldn't even enter the house. Da Wu didn't know why Bai and Xiao Xiao suddenly became unhappy again. He stood at a loss for a moment and then, as if pleasing, took out two big dates from his sleeve and handed them to An Xiao Xiao. Auntie, eat. The bright red dates are oily and shiny, crispy and sweet at first glance. An Xiao Xiao's gaze shifted from Zhaozi to Dao's face, and she fell silent for a moment. Clean. Da Wu saw An Xiao Xiao not answering for a long time, thinking that she disliked the dates for being unclean. He hurriedly wiped the dates with his sleeve and reached out to pass them to her. Auntie, you eat. I won't eat it, you keep it for yourself. And Xiao Xiao averted her gaze and pushed away Da Wu's hand. After waiting for a moment, she grabbed his wrist and led him to the stone table. After eating later, you can stay and help, and learn how to apply medicine with Xiao Qing. Xiao Qing is a new elementary school apprentice to the clinic, a relative of the village head's family, who is clever and responsible in his work. Currently, the clinic is in short supply, so the village head recommended him to come over. Let's talk about it first. There's no salary. Every day after closing, I'll test you three medicinal herbs. If you make a mistake, you'll be fined 100 times for copying. If you can't finish copying, you won't be allowed to eat. And Xiao Xiao asked Dao to sit on the stone bench. Seeing his nose red, he pondered for a while before taking out a few medicinal herbs from the space and putting them into the medicine mill. When she got home, she boiled the medicine and drank it all in one go. She lowered her head and ground the medicine, while talking to Da Wu about precautions. At first, the other person was still responding, but as she spoke, her own voice remained. And Xiao Xiao frowned and looked up, ready to slap her. Did you hear me? Her black and bright eyes seemed to contain a pool of lake water, devoid of any impurities. At this moment, they were wide open, staring at her without hesitation. And Xiao Xiao's heart suddenly jumped, and her tone stuttered unconsciously. You, what are you looking at? Auntie, look good. The owner of the eyes was still silly and silly, as if he didn't know anything. The black and shiny eyes smiled, inexplicably reminding in Xiao Xiao of the black back she raised in her previous life. She was both obedient and clingy, furry and cute, making her heart itch. What a fool! And Xiao Xiao was startled by her own thoughts. She lowered her head and placed the medicinal herbs in his arms. She lifted the curtain and entered the lobby without looking back. Da Wu held the medicine and was stunned. After a while, a roar came from the lobby. Come and eat yourself. Come on. Da Wu grinned and happily followed in. End of this chapter.